Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your, God, your, your place of peace where you have us this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for continuing to bless us and heal us, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for continuing to, to show you how great and mighty you are. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for what you continue to do in our lives. And we thank you for this word, Lord God. We know, God, you are already in it. Thank you for showering your blessings, Lord, upon us. Lord, we thank you for what you continue to do in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Rosemary, good morning. Sister Sherilyn, good morning to you. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord is great. Yes, yes, yes. He is mighty, mighty good. Good morning to you, Sister Sheila. To all of you that are joining this morning, it is Friday. The Lord is great. You know, this has been a powerful, powerful week, a powerful week of uh, consecration and prayer and dedication to the Lord. It's been a powerful week of us getting closer to God. It's been a powerful week, Sister Regina, of us doing what the Lord has called for us to do so that we can then, you know, be in the vein and in the position of where the Lord wants us so that he can move. I'm telling you, sometimes we got to get out of the way. We got to move out of the way. And so that the Lord can do what he wants us to do the way so that the Lord can continue to shower his blessings upon us. We've got to, I'm telling you, do what it is that he wants us to do. Just be still somebody and let the, let Lord, the Lord do what it is that he's going to do in our lives. This is Friday and Friday we are praying about coming back home, praying about coming back home for our, our 21 day of uh, days of fasting and, and uh, meditation. Uh, come back home. For those of you who have been out of your churches, yes, um, out of your churches and out of your places where the Lord can use you, use your gifts and your talents. Today, we are praying that you come back home. Go back to the Lord. Go back to your first love. Go back to the place where the Lord can use you, where you can use your gifts and talents and abilities. Maybe your talents, your skills have gone dormant. Come on, the Lord wants to use them. Ask the Lord to stir them up. Because it's like Timothy just said. He said, stir up the gifts, Lord, that I have, that I may be able to use them. Today, we're talking about gifts. I said, e plurubus unum. You said, what in the world is she talking about? That is, you know, uh, the seal of the United States. You know, we're in this vein. We're talking about, um, you know, the election. And, and I got to stay in that vein because the Lord has been speaking through that thing this week. If you all don't know it, you know, they talk about the separation of church and state. But if you all don't know it, the Lord has been speaking through that thing this week. And you all got to keep your eyes and your ears open. I'm glad that you all have went and voted. Good morning to you, Sister Belinda. Sister Sherry, good morning to you. That you all have voted because your voices have been heard. You all, listen, there's been cause, you've caused a shift in the atmosphere. You've caused a shift in the entire United States. You've caused a shift in your communities, wherever you live. You've caused a shift. But I was listening the other day um, to Bishop Michael Curry, and he was giving his, his um, you know, spiel on what is happening here in the United States and how the shift has been occurring. And he talked about e pluribus unum. And he, he went on to speak about that. And what that means simply is out of many, one. And that is the motto of the United States. And the Lord gave that to me on last night. He says, e pluribus unum. I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do with that? He said, out of many, one. That is the motto of the United States. He said, but not only is that the motto of the United States, that ought to be how we, we work and we thrive as every man and woman of God. This, again, is the motto of the United States, the traditional motto of the United States. And it is what appears on the seal. Th this, um, Yeah, that's right, Prophet Tressa. This is what appears on the seal of the United States, United States seal. This is what appears there. And sometimes, again, we talk about, you know, separation of church and state. But but in the end, you know what? There is no separation. God is in all of it. You know, we, we are united with God in the United States. And people try to take, you know, take, try to take uh, God out of the schools. They try to take God out of everything. But you know what? God is in everything. He is a center of everything. You know, it's it's in it's in it all. You can't take God out. And so when I think about this and when I thought about this thing that Bishop Curry was talking about um, on the other day, you know, out of out of many one. I began to think about the gifts and what, what the Lord was talking about in First Corinthians um, chapter 13. Um uh, he, he began to talk about it in First Corinthians chapter 13. And I began to say, Lord, what are you saying? What are you sharing with me? What are you sharing with all of us in this, or chapter 12, First Corinthians chapter 12? 
What are you beginning to, what are you sharing with us in this particular passage of scripture? What he's saying here is there need not to be any divisions or diversities, uh, divisions in the body. There needs to be unity in the body. And as we see right now, there's so much division. Um, there's so much disunity in the United States. What he's saying to us is there's got to be some, div- so there's got to be diversity, but even though there's diversity, there's got to be unity. And so as I look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's a couple of passages of scripture that I'm going to look at and read for you. But you, I want you to read from the whole thing. Start from verse number one. It talks about the different gifts and it talks about how everybody has different gifts. So we understand that we are different, but we need to start celebrating one another's differences. And I'm talking about, yes, I'm different from you. Listen, we have different colors. We speak differently. We came from different places, different locations. We we uh, we have uh, there are all sorts of differences. We can do different things. Of course, we have different professions. That's what makes the world the way that it is. And especially in the body of Christ, some of us can speak in tongues. Some of us have differences of administration. Some of us have differences in gifts. We all have differences. But we, listen, as we have differences, we bring those differences together. And we come together and we have to love one another, even in those differences that we have. And so the, the word of the Lord, I love it, what, what uh, Bishop Curry said to us. And listen, out of many, there is one. We are still one. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, come on in here, somebody. <laughs> 1 Corinthians, I, I, I love this because it, it brought me to understanding that, listen, because there are differences right now, it brought me to understanding that just because somebody is different from me doesn't mean I got to look down on them. That's just because somebody may not have a, a, the same amount of finances or resources does not mean I look down on them. Just because somebody doesn't have a, the, the great amount of clothes or something that that you have doesn't mean that you look down on them. It doesn't mean, my God, that you look differently upon them. It just means that they are different. Uh, if I look here in First Corinthians chapter twelve. Uh, I start. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna start reading with verse number one. I'm gonna start reading at verse number twelve. And at verse number twelve, it just simply starts reading with this. It says, "For as the body is one, the body is one, but has many members." But all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. We got to start there. We are many members, but we're one body. All of us are the same. And so it seems to me that, listen, if we're all the same, we're all one body. It's just like I have two hands. But I'm not going to cut this one hand off because it doesn't have a right ring on it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to cut this hand off because it can't do the same things that this hand can do. Because my, my go on in here, somebody, because my left hand may have perhaps is not as strong as my right hand. I'm not going to cut my left hand off. I need my left hand and my right hand because maybe my toes don't seem like they're as functionable to me as my fingers. I'm not going to cut my toes off. I need my toes. I may, you may not think you need them. You may only think you need your feet and you may not need your toes, but listen, you need your toes to balance. Come on. How many of you, come on. How many of you, maybe you've been in a diabetic state and maybe you've had to have some of your toes maybe cut off. You see that your balance is off. Come on in here, somebody. I got to get real with you this morning because sometimes we look on other people because maybe we feel like they're yes less functional than we are that we don't need them but the lord is telling saying to us is listen we are all a part of this great big body and all of us yes prophet tressa all of us serve a unique purpose in the kingdom of god thank you for saying that this morning but the bible goes on to say for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body whether jews or greeks whether slaves or free the Lord is not making any difference. He says, all of us have been made to drink into one spa- and one to spirit. He says, for in fact, the body is not one member. Come on, but many. Come on, many members come together and we make one body. He says, for if the foot should say, because I'm not the hand, I am not the body. You cannot come on, look at somebody and say, you are not important in the body of Christ. You cannot look at somebody and say, listen, you are not functional in the body of Christ. You cannot look at somebody and say, I don't need you. Come on, somebody. And then the Bible says, and if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I am not the body. You got to read this whole thing for yourself. You got to read this whole thing for yourself. Because if the whole Bible says, if the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? 
If everybody was just like me, come on, we, you got you to gotta say to yourself, Dr. Evelyn, I don't have everything. Thank you for saying that. We need each other to survive. I don't have it all. I don't know it all. Come on, I can't get it all. I need somebody else. I was encouraged the other day when I had a gathering of, of, of ministers' wives that were here in our home. And we came together just to fellowship. And they wanted to sing a song. I need you. You need me. And we sang that song. And we sang it and we loved on one another. Because we need one another. We need to feel one another's care and compassion and support. And not only us, but you all need me. You need me. I need you. The Bible says, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. And sometimes, if, and if they were all one member, where would the body be? The Lord does it as he pleases. And sometimes we try to do God's job for him. We try to be the one to pluck out those who we think don't belong there. But the Lord says he does it as he pleases, Sister Sherilyn. He does it. He sets people in order. He sets them in place. He gives them the gifts and the talents and the skills and abilities as he pleases. This 20 is the first verse I want you to focus on. E pluribus unum. It says, but now indeed there are many members, yet there are one body. We're all different. Black, white, yellow. We're all different. Tan. We're all different. All of us. Yet there is one body. We need to start celebrating the differences. And even in this time of division, I mean, it seems that the world has cracked in two. We need to begin to start celebrating the differences of one another. And I'm talking about celebrating to the point where we can build on what has been already broken and build on it. Because the Bible goes on, it continues to say, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. What is it? What are they saying? The head to the feet? Those in leadership. Come on in here, somebody. Those in leadership, those who are in high places. This is what this, is, this verse is saying here. Those who are in high places. They cannot say to the feet, those who they consider low. Those who they consider beneath them, they cannot say, come on, I'm talking to leadership now. You cannot get so high and mighty that you think you don't need those who you consider that are below you. Because the Bible says, listen, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Whoever is great among you, they have to be those who are serving. So we can't get so high and mighty. Listen, we can't get so powerful. We can't get so anointed people of God. That we feel like, listen, those who we, we consider to be a below us, my God, are dispensable. That we can just throw them away. Come on, that we can just get rid of them. For the Lord here is saying, you can't say that. He says, no much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker. They're, they're necessary. He said, it seem to be weaker are necessary. Those who we think are weaker, the Lord says they are necessary. He said in those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable on those, we, we should bestow much greater honor and on our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But where we think, listen, we cover up our feet, we put shoes on them, but we ought to take better care of them. Why is it? Hallelujah. Because our feet take us to the place where the Lord wants for us to be. We should take greater care of our feet. Ladies, by not sticking them in shoes. Come on, that pinch and that cause bunions and corns. Take greater care of our less presentable parts. Because they take us to the place where God needs for us to be. Where he needs for us to take greater care, my God, of the places that the Bible says that are less presentable. Oh, my God. He says, but God composed the body in the body, but that the members should have the same care, he says, for one another and that there should be no schism in the body. There should, but the, there should be no issues in the body. We shouldn't be fighting against one another. Come on, this is a good lesson right now for all of us, for all of us that we're going through this, 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 um, this, this interesting and unique time of this electorate. He says, we should have no schism in the body. But that all members should have care, 
The same care for one another. Same care for those who are impoverished. The same care for those who are underserved. The same care for those, my God, who feel like you can, they cannot speak for themselves. The same care, he says, and if, and if one member suffers, all of the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all of the members rejoice with it. Listen, we need to rejoice with those who rejoice. rejoice. And if somebody is suffering, listen to me, people of God. All of us suffer because we are all the same body. Don't you know, my God, if you slam your finger in the door of a car, and I've done it before, it isn't just your finger that hurts. Come on, it's your head that hurts. It's your whole body that hurts. Your arm is throbbing. Your hand is throbbing. Come on, everything about you is hurting because your finger got stuck, my God, in the door of a car. Whatever happened to you, if you cut yourself, it is not that's just that place that is hurting. It is every piece of your body is hurting. And that's what the Lord is saying to us about the body of Christ. When one part of us hurts, every piece of us ought to hurt. When one one part of us rejoices. Come on in here, somebody. Every piece and part of us ought to rejoice. We've got to get to the place, people of God, where we are honoring one another, honoring one, no matter what has happened in the past. You got to get to the place where you are honoring one another because of what my God is happening in the body. If we all belong to one another, I belong to you and you belong to me. So when you rejoice, I need to rejoice. When I rejoice, you need to rejoice. My God. The second verse I want you to really pay attention to is number 27. And it says this, it says, now you are the body of Christ. So if you don't feel like you belong to the body of Christ, I'm not talking to you this morning. But I believe that because you've logged on, because you got up at six o'clock in the morning to hear a word from the Lord, that this word is for you. It says, now you are a body of Christ and members individually. You have a place in the body of Christ. Here in this passage of scripture, the, 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 the church of Corinth, they were a carnal church and they had many divisions, many, they were, they were bound by divisions, just like it seems like we are in the world in the United States today. But they had, they had never come to the point where they believed that God was their all in all. They were still babes in Christ. And it seems that although we feel like we've grown from being babes, we are still babes in Christ. We thought that we had, as the United States, we thought that we had gone past some of the things that we are were experiencing right now. But it seems that we've gone backwards and that we're babes in Christ and babes in the United States. That we're, we're doing babyish things and doing childish things. But people of God, we've got to get to the place where we're understanding, my God, that we got to get away from the childish things. The Bible says, when I was a child, I did childish things. I, I acted as a child. I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. We got to get to the point, people of God, where we stop going back and forth and back and forth and doing things tit for tat. That we got to put away the childish things, my God, and, and grow into a, a man, a mature man and woman of God, where we begin to use the gifts and the talents that God has given to us, reaching out to men and women, my God, who cannot do things on their own and do things for themselves, understanding, my God, that the gifts and talent that God has given to us are those that we possess to bless and to help the body of Christ. We have got to get to a place where we use the gifts and talents that God has given to us to minister to one another because because what we do is we minister helps. We minister grace. We minister mercy to others. And we've got to begin to see that as we mature the things of God, that is what God has given us the gifts and talents to do, to minister and to grow up one another in Christ, that all of us will grow up and be the men and women of God that God has called us to do. But in the church of Corinth, they were not doing that. They were using their gifts to build themselves up. My God, don't you see it happening in the United States today? That they were using themselves they're using the gifts that God had given to them to build up themselves. And this morning, we need to clear that situation up that God has given us such great and mighty gifts, such powerful gifts, such great spiritual gifts that we would not build ourselves up, that we would build one another up because we are all one in the body of Christ. All of us, my God, got to have to, got to come together, my God, that we would be, begin to understand and see ourselves as one in the body of Christ. We're, we're all, we've all been placed here to do a work, all of us, but you've got to start taking this thing personal. 
You have, we all have got to start taking this thing personal. Because all of us, my God, have experienced what the Lord has done in our life. And because we've all experienced this, we've all, listen, I, I believe that all of us here have been baptized into the body of Christ. And because we've been baptized into the body of Christ, Bible says, listen, when, you, when you're born into Christ, you're a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And that means to us that you've been baptized. So therefore, this is a permanent place, a position that God has put you in. And therefore, because it's a permanent place, you need to start working the work that God has for you to work. You have a place in the body of Christ. The Lord has placed you there. He's given you a position in the body of Christ. And so since you know that you have a position, you now need to know where you fit. Pastor Tina, where do I fit in the body of Christ? And you're fitting there. Yes, Prophet Tressa, it's not about you. It's about the kingdom of work, kingdom work. Where do you fit in the body of Christ? So Paul here in this passage of scripture was, was, was giving attention or calling attention to the position that you have in the body of Christ. He's saying to you, every believer is a part. And so you may think, you may, you know, I talk to many people and say, well, I'm shy and I'm an introvert and, you know, and I don't talk to people and I don't do, listen, I don't care what you are. You could be an introvert. You could be an extrovert. You can be whatever you are. You have a place in the body of Christ because you are a part of the body. You are. You have been, the Lord created you so you can be fit in the body. His body of made, made up of people who may or may not have things in common. You don't need to have a lot of things in common. All of us are unique. But the thing that we do have in common is that you have received the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You got that in common. And so because we have that in common, you have a place in the body of Christ. And so no matter how you consider yourself, no matter what you think you can do or, or what you think you can't do, the Lord can use you because you are a part of the kingdom of God. He, so, so stop thinking that you cannot be used. Stop thinking that you don't fit. You fit. Every believer has a place. Every believer has a place in the body of Christ. I don't care what somebody has told you. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be able to, they, they used to say, you have to be able to preach like Paul. You don't, you don't have to be able to do that. Whatever you can do, the Lord gave you the ability to do that. You use the gifts that God has given to you. You, you don't have to. You know, people say, well, I want to be in the background. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have to be up front. You don't have to be up front. You know, you can be the foot that's hidden by the shoe, but you're just as important. You can be the big toe to provide balance to the ship that's going on the sea. You can be one. My God, it doesn't matter if you are the one who sings the song. My God, you can be the one who creates the lyrics for the praise team to sing the songs that are so melodious that the, that the people of God can hear it and feel the presence of God moving in the place that they are in. Oh my God, help me, Holy Spirit, in here. You may not think that you have a place, but you have a place, my God, in the body of Christ. You may not be the one, my God, who is able to be the accountant to keep track of the money that comes into the church. But my God, the Lord may have given you a spirit of giving and you have, my God, resources to give into the body of Christ. And you may not be one that has a lot of resources, but the Lord doesn't care about the amount. He cares about your obedience to give because when he said you give, he'll give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will he give unto you? And so because of your giving, you are showing your obedience and somebody else is looking on and they're saying, how can they give when it seems like they don't have a whole? lot. They are blessing. You are blessing somebody else by your obedience and by your obedience. The Lord is then rewarding you openly. My God, because what it is that you are doing in the body of Christ. Help me in here. Somebody, somebody thinks that because they don't want to be out front, that they are not fit and they are not, they are not come on uniquely fit in the body of Christ, but the Lord is using you. My God, 
all the more. He's using you, my God, even the more. And I want to bring it out in you today because listen, the Bible says out of many one, you are, come on, a part of the body of Christ just as well because you have been one that have been laying in the cut. You have been, oh, come on in here, somebody. You have been one that been laying in the cut. You have been one that have been thinking that you didn't fit because everybody else was so boisterous. Everybody else was so out in the open. Everybody else was shining, my God, where you thought that you were dull. But the Lord is saying, listen, I need you just as well. You are unique and you fit. You have an important place in the body of Christ. He's saying, listen, I know they may have said they saw you over there sitting looking shy. They saw you over there holding up the wall. But the Lord is saying right now, my God, it's time for you to come on and shine. He said, listen, you don't have to shine, my God, so that everybody knows what you're doing. He said, because what, what you do, come on, in the secret. He says, I'm going to reward you openly. He says, I'm going to do that thing because there is nobody, my God, that can say to you, I don't have need of you. He said, because I'm the one. I placed you in the body because, my God, you believe in me. You believe in the power, my God, of prayer. You believe in your, my God, your faith has healed you and made you whole. He said, listen, if you don't get in there, he said, there is going to be an essential part of the body that is missing. He's saying, my God, to you, that if you don't come on in there and use what it is I've given to you, that essential thing that you have, my God, you may think it's small. He said, but it is very important in the body of Christ. Somebody may have told you that it wasn't necessary. He said, but it is necessary. He said, that's why, come on, they're failing because they told you that your piece, come on, your, your screw, come on, they told you that your nut, your bolt, it wasn't necessary. But that little bitty bolt, that little bitty thing, my God, that was that was missing. That's what made the whole thing fall apart. Somebody thought that their little bitty boat wasn't necessary, but that's what caused the whole thing, my God, to fall apart. Somebody needs to help me in here because you thought that you weren't necessary, but I'm telling you, my God, the Lord is, wants you to know this morning that you're necessary and you need it. As a matter of fact, he's saying you are essential to the body of Christ. Somebody need to help me in here because you need to know, my God, that you are essential to the body of Christ. You are essential this morning to the body of Christ. You are essential. You have a purpose. You have a divine purpose. So we cannot tell anybody that they don't, that they're not necessary. Your different function, your different responsibility Know what it is. And then for everybody that is on this line, oh, I got to get out of here. You got to promote unity. From this day forward, don't promote negativity. Don't promote division. But we've got to promote unity. Because when everybody does your part, when everybody submits to God, and doing what you are called, listen to me, people of God, and doing what you are called to do, then the body of Christ will function in the peace that the Lord has created to function in. When we as a people do what we are called to do, then the entire world will function as God called for it to function. Separation of church and state, no such thing. E perubus unum. <laughs> Out of many, one. When we promote unity, we will function as God wants for us to function. We will have the peace that God called for us to have. Every last one of us, we have to promote unity, not only in the body of Christ, but we've got to promote unity in the entire world. Father God, I just bless you. I praise you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for who you are. I thank you, Lord God, for helping us to know, Lord God, that we are all special, Lord God. That we are all somebody in the body of Christ. Not only in the body of Christ, Lord God, but we are somebody in this world. And Lord God, as we continue to function, God, around one another, we continue, Lord, to function, Lord God, and understand, Lord God, how we affect each other and how we affect the world and how we impact, Lord God, the body of Christ. I thank you, Lord God, that we understand that as we are lifted up, Lord God, others will be blessed around us. And Lord God, how we lift one another up. All of us, God, shall be blessed. I thank you, Lord God, for helping us to understand how we function, Lord, in the body of Christ and how we all need one another. 
Thank you, Lord God, for continuing to shower your blessings up on the people of God. And Lord, helping us to understand, Lord God, that we need to promote unity, God, not just in the body of Christ, but Lord God, in the world, that this world, Lord God, will function in, p- in peace. Together, Lord God, we are a body individually, Lord God. We may, God, in our different churches, Lord God, be small. We may have small units of Lord God, but I thank you, Lord God, that we are big in you, the body of Christ. We're all the same. We thank you, Lord God, for helping us to understand Lord God, that all of us, Lord, are gifted in certain areas, Lord God, but as we're gifted in certain areas, we're all unique, but Lord God, we'll celebrate that uniqueness, Lord, from this day forward. We bless you, Lord God, for how you have seated us, Lord God, in heavenly places with you. Thank you, Lord God, for showering us with with special blessings, for showering us, God, with your great gifts. Thank you, Lord God, for showering us, Lord God, with the power that we need to create, God, unity in the earth realm. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Amen, people of God. Listen, this is a great lesson. Not just for the people of God, but this is a great lesson for the world. As our world, Lord, has been torn apart, we need to put our world back together again by helping everybody to understand that, yes, we may be different. The Lord created us to be different. But in our differences, we got to understand that we are all one. We got to come back together again, people of God. And we can do that with each and every one of you. I love you all so much with the love of Jesus. It's Giving Friday given to this ministry because I'm telling you the Lord is blessing, he's healing and delivering. If you want to give into good ground, give today. I bless God for all of you. Yes, e peribus unum. Yes, out of many, one. Have a wonderful weekend. Go in peace.